Greetings. Uh, let us learn about the pharmacology, especially the drugs that we use for injection during different types of endoscopy. So when you go to your storage area, you need to pick up the injection needle and also make sure that your drug uh, drugs are also in enough supply. So let us look at an injection needle uh, which has the size of um, anywhere between 23 to 25 gauge. It's a very small needle and the dead space of the injection needle is anywhere between 1.5 to 2 cc's. Uh, the reason that is important it is when you take any of these substances, epinephrine, sodium tetradecal sulfate, glue, methylene blue or indigo carmine, spot or carbon particles or Botox. When you take any of these into your syringe, there are a couple of things you need to do. So you fill the syringe with the substance and the first step is clear the air bubbles in the syringe by facing the syringe up and slowly pushing the plunger. Next, hook it up to the injection catheter and push some more till a couple of drops come out. That is called priming the needle. It takes about 1.5 to 2 cc's. Once you prime the needle, you should hold the syringe facing down so that if in case there are any bubbles that float up and you don't accidentally inject bubbles into the system. It is very important to make sure that the syringe is free from bubbles and to make sure that you prime the needle uh, so that when the endoscopist poop tries to inject, you are not injecting air and creating an air blab. So something to keep in mind. Now let us uh, learn about the functions of these different uh, solutions. Epinephrine causes vasospasm, that means constricts the blood vessels and it is used for controlling uh, any type of bleeding, especially arterial bleeding and a good example is ulcer bleeding. Next, sodium tetradecal sulfate. It is a sclerosant. It, it, it irritates the lining of the vessels and it is used to control venous bleeding and a good example is esophageal variceal bleeding. Another one is the glue and there are different types of glues and they cause thrombosis and they are used again for control of venous bleeding, especially large gastric variceal bleeding. Next, methylene blue or indigo carmine and uh, these stain the submucosa and they are used for chromoendoscopy that is staining the lining and uh, it is uh, to, to find out about polyps and it is also used in injection form to define the depth of the uh, resection. Uh, we will learn a little more uh, later about it. Next, the tattoo and it is used for marking the site 
for a follow-up exam or for surgery. Say, for example, if you find a polyp or a cancer and you want to either follow it up with a, an endoscopy later on or you want to send a patient to surgery, uh, putting a tattoo uh, helps. And uh, finally, botulinum toxin or Botox, it causes muscle paralysis, so it relieves the spasm in Echalasia, where there is a lot of spasm of the lower esophageal sphincter, and it also relieves the spasm in anal fissure. So we have learned about how to prepare the needle, and we have learned about different solutions and their uses. And uh, let us learn a little more about each one of these. Epinephrine controls arterial bleeding especially peptic ulcer bleeding and by inducing vasospasm. So here is an, an active ulcer with a bleeding vessel. So when you see a bleeding vessel, the first thing is you should get ready with your epinephrine solution and you typically dilute the epinephrine solution to 1 in uh, 10,000 to 1 in 100,000 and depending the type of uh, case you are doing. For arterial bleeding, uh, you use uh, uh, 1 in 10,000 dilution. And you inject around the vessel and uh, close to the vessel about 1 to 2 cc's. Uh, that will cause both the tamponade effect and the spasm effect. And depending upon what is happening, uh, uh, one could inject uh, between 5 to 10 ml to control the bleeding. And in some cases, people have used as large as uh, 20, 25 ml. And once you uh, control the bleeding, uh, you should not come out because this vessel uh, will reopen when the spasm is gone when the drug effect is gone. Uh, hence, after controlling the bleeding with epinephrine, you should go ahead and do the next step. Uh, use a cautery, either with a heater probe uh, to seal the vessel, or a bipolar probe, or a gold probe to seal the vessel. So next, let's talk about controlling venous bleeding with uh, sodium tetradecal sulfate and uh, as we have already learned it causes sclerosis of the blood vessels. So typically uh, you go to the lower end of the esophagus and inject into the vein or around the vein about 1 to 2 cc's. Uh, into each vein till you create uh, clotting of the uh, blood vessel. You start close to the G junction, that is the most important thing and uh, you should inject small amounts and as you inject you should share with your endoscopist how much you injected. You should say loudly 1 cc injected 2 cc injected like that. Next, let us talk about uh, glue that is used to control fundic variceal bleeding or gastric varices. It is also used for controlling bleeding in other sites, uh, esophageal varices as well and uh, it works by causing thrombosis. It is a little more complicated and uh, here is uh, gastric varices being injected with the glue. You inject small amounts you, uh, slowly. You do not want to inject large amounts and fast because the glue can go up uh, the bloodstream and create clots in the lungs, clots in the brain and create significant problems. So injection of glue should be done slowly. 
and in small amounts and as you inject you should tell your endoscopist like we did before 1 cc injected 2 cc injected like, like that next chromo endoscopy with either methylene blue or indigo carmine for endoscopic mucosal resection this one stains the submucosa so it helps you determine the depth of endoscopic mucosal resection or EMR and we will talk a little more about it. So you prepare the solution by putting uh, one drop in 10 cc saline filled syringe or you can put in 10 drops in 100 cc saline bag if you have a large polyp to be resected. Uh, some have used in uh, hitter starch uh, instead of saline and there are some pre-made solutions uh, that have uh, either methylene blue or indigo carmine available in the market. So the first thing is you want to make sure that your needle is primed and free from bubbles. So you flush and then you inject to lift the polyp and allow the resection to happen. And as the resection happens and if you see nice blue uh, woolly material in the base that is submucosa, you can be assured that the resection depth has not gone deep. So let us learn about the technique. How do you actually inject? Make sure your syringe is facing down and make sure that you have no bubbles in the syringe. Make sure that you have already primed the needle and checked with a little bit of flush as soon as it comes out. So once the endoscopist pushes the catheter into the submucosa, he will ask you to inject. And what you should do, the first few steps, you should tap, tap on the plunger so that only small amounts of fluid go in. So tap, tap. And uh, once it goes into the submucosa and creates a lift, the endoscopist tries to pull the needle slightly back to give you space so that you could inject further. So let's see. So you, we flushed, prime the needle, and then we tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. Now you got into the submucosa, and then you're injecting slowly. And once you know that you're in the submucosa, then you can inject a little bit fast. And as you do the injection, you should say loudly, 1 cc injected, 2 cc injected, 3 cc injected, like that so that the endoscopist knows how much you're injecting and if you've injected 5 cc's and nothing has lifted up that means your needle is through and through and is going into the peritoneal cavity. Let us look at the mechanism. Here is a polyp and it is on the mucosa and below the mucosa is submucosa and below that muscle and then outside lining is called serosa. So you have the injection catheter out, but the needle is not yet out. So before you inject, you should get the needle out, and then the endoscopist gently pushes it down into the submucosa, and then you tap, 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 tap. That's how you get a nice controlled submucosal lift. Keep in mind, tap, 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 tap. Now let's look at, say for example, you find a polyp or a cancer and you want to mark the site for follow-up exam or for surgery, you inject a tattoo. It is called spot. So if you find a polyp and you want to either refer the patient to someone else or you want to come back and uh, 
resect it at a later date, you want to mark that site by placing a tattoo in the same level or the same level as the polyp, three centimeters towards the anal side, uh, maybe one or two tattoos. Never inject into the polyp or very close to the polyp. If you are sending the patient for cancer, then you want to mark it on three or four, uh, four quadrants so that the surgeon can see the tattoo on the outside. In terms of how to put a tattoo, you do not want to put the tattoo into the peritoneal cavity. You want to put the tattoo into the submucosa. And because we don't have control over that, what we do is we create a saline bleb first, three, a few centimeters away from the lesion, and then fill the bleb with tattoo so that you have a nice submucosal bleb without pushing your tattoo outside into the peritoneal cavity. Next, let us look at a Botox that causes muscle paralysis and relieves the spasm in achalasia and also relieves the spasm and heals anal fissure. Here is a patient with achalasia the, where the lower esophageal sphincter has a lot of spasm. It does not allow the food to go down. There are different ways to treat. In some who are very high risk for surgery or any endoscopic procedures like balloon dilation or POEM, uh, one may consider using a botulinum toxin injection. Typically, it comes in a vial. You dilute it in a solution and it is about 100 units, about 4 cc's or 5 cc's and 100 units and uh, you inject into the lower esophageal uh, sphincter, about 25 units in each quadrant, four quadrants, and that allows the lower esophageal sphincter to relax. It is a temporary uh, phenomenon and uh, the spasm may come back again. So I hope you learned a lot uh, in this lesson about the various solutions we use. Key is to fill the syringe, make sure there are no bubbles, prime the needle and keep your syringe facing down so that if in case bubbles appear, you do not push bubbles uh, into the tissue. And as you inject, make sure you say loudly how much you injected. One cc injected, two cc injected. And finally, when it is, uh, uh, when the case is a polyp resection and you want to find the submucosa, the initial injection should not be forceful. It should be tap tap on the plunger that allows uh, you to find the submucosa uh, safely. Thank you.